Hey, Abdul. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Yeah, hi. Oh. Hi, Ahmad. Good to see you today. <laughs> By the way, it's late night today um, from your own end. But uh, yeah, good to see you, Ahmad, coming to join us. I'm really happy uh, to see you. Um, yeah. Okay, sorry for joining late, guys. Um, but I think we can get started. So today we're going to um, uh, have chapter three, um, the activity, and Abdul is going to lead us for the chapter. Um, Abdul, over to you. Uh, you can get started. I just put the start button. And um, happy presenting, Abdul. Yeah. Let me try to share my screen. I, I guess you're you're all seeing my screen, right? Yes. Yes, we can see. Yeah. So I'll be moving between the slides and the and the text if necessary, and. Um, like I'm pretty new to this stuff, so um, maybe I might uh, find it difficult to explain some concepts clearly. So um, anyone could just feel free to come in and, and explain. Yeah, so we're looking at a basic uh, reactivity, chapter three, the, 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 the learning objectives uh, to explain more in details how the input and the output argument works. Or what are the 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 don'ts and and do's for the 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 input argument, and to also differentiate between the uh, imperative and the declarative programming. So the the imperative is uh, like the 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 one we have all been used to, like the normal R script or the R commands. While the declarative, it's more like. Uh, our SCP and we'll see that it will discuss that more in details. Basically, this uh, uh, shiny app is more into the declarative programming component. Uh, we'll also describe the basics of reactivity inputs uh, directly connected to, to, to outputs and, and how this works. And like, uh, we'll also see the uh, react reactivity diagrams to uh, have an idea of what the like the app does and how the executions are, are done. Uh, apply uh, reactive uh, expressions to eliminate eliminate uh, duplicated works. Uh, this will also be very useful. It will um, uh, like uh, it, it mentioned somewhere in the text that like uh, programmers are used. Um, there is a saying that if you copy and paste for more than three times, you should consider writing a function. But uh, uh, the author recommends that you know in Shiny. If you copy and paste once, then you should consider writing a, a reactive expression for, 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 for such. Yeah. Yeah, then it gives a recap of uh, the previous chapters. Like uh, it says like the, uh, the, the normal R script, which is like a sequential logic, like the, the codes are executed uh, following the the, the 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 sequence or the the way the commands are written or the lines of code, whilst in the reactive programming, which is more like the declarative programming component, uh, 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 graphs of dependencies. So uh, it does not necessarily mean that the line of code that comes first will be executed uh, in that sequence. It, it doesn't necessarily have to do with that. Shiny will will sort of decide the most. Uh, of, it 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 will just. Uh, um, run the uh, how I call it the, the outputs and some of the 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 the, the codes in your uh, there it might not run them something like this it 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 mentions something like this in the book like uh, where I mentioned being lazy you know shiny being lazy not not like it it runs everything uh, important learnings uh, so far uh, the main app. Some, some main components. We, we have seen the, the, the front end, which is the UI object um, in the first two chapters, which, uh, which contains the, uh, the HTML presented to every user of the app. is uh, simple because every user gets the same HTML, but the back end, it's more complicated. Uh, it's more complicated because every user needs to get an independent version of the app. So like every user will, uh, uh, user A modifies an input field. User B shouldn't see the the, the output changes. 
So basically, it's uh, something like this. Uh, uh, this is the shiny uh, UI, and then the the HTML is uh, the same for everyone, but uh, different users will have uh, a different shiny uh, servers. So uh, like uh, independent user functions. So this is what, in a sense, makes the, the back end component more complicated because you uh, you want to make it uh, in such a way that every independent users will uh, will have like uh, uh, independent server functions. Yeah, if someone has anything to add on this. Okay. Uh, a deeper dive into this, uh, the, the, the server function. So uh, this is the basic uh, layout. We have the input, the output, and also the, 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 the session. So it, he mentions in the book that he will function on, of course, on the input and the output. And the session will be discussed maybe later. Uh, the the input uh, it's sort of like a, a list like object used for rece receiving inputs sent from the browser. So it's not where you want to read only uh, like you want to start assigning uh, uh, values to variables. You cannot you cannot do that in the in the in the in the, uh, in the server. You cannot do that. Otherwise, you will get a, a, a Error message. So it 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 it, it reads like only reactive uh, context. So you can use functions like the render text or the reactive. If not, you you will get an error. And they they, they give a nice example of this in the in the in the book. Yeah. Yeah, so this is an example where if you just want to type like uh, assign um, like 10 to count, it, it will not, it will give you an error. Can't modify uh, uh, read only reactive values. So it will, it will give you an error. Whilst the output is also a list like uh, object used for sending outputs, always use uh, a render function sets up the reactive context and renders the, the HTML. So this is uh, basically a, 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 a simple uh, layout of how the UI and the server component connects. So uh, in, 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 uh, in our studio, we just, if we just call this, it, uh, uh, it will, um, like if we say shiny, if we use the shiny, uh, call the shiny function and then have the UI and the server. It 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 displays this. Yeah, it displays this. Yeah, basically this is how the 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 UI and the server connects. Yeah, any any comments on this? One, anyone wants to add something? Um, hello everyone, you hear me? Yeah. It's Ahmed. Oh, so you hear me, ah, nice. So uh, I just want to add to, I, I, I don't know if it's if this mentioned before, but uh, this uh, the, the, the HTML structure in, in Shiny is built on Bootstrap. So if um, the components that build on Shiny UI that you see like fluid page uh, and anything like, UI designed uh, is based on the, is a Bootstrap component. So, if you go to the Bootstrap website, you will show you will see the, um, the components themselves. So you could like give uh, get a hint on what what is used to from the Bootstrap itself, not just Shiny. So that's that's what I uh, I would add. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks. I, I don't think they, they, that has been mentioned in the book, but it's a, a good point to take note of. Thanks. Yeah, I think Jim has a question. Jim, can you omit and ask the question? Is okay. Um, or maybe I can read the question if you don't mind. Um, he says a few times the book said something like "shiny does this for you." 
I don't understand how the brother, I don't understand how brother, your app and server fit together. Um, does anybody? So, um, I think I have an idea. So it's, uh, since the, as, uh, the server side is running on R and uh, the, um, the UI side or the front end is running on the browser itself by combining them the both sides. So we are rendering HTML from the server. So it gets calculated on the server. Then we, we send it to the browser to, um, to show it on the screen. Um, and uh, what what this means, I think, when it says Shiny do, does it for you, is basically is define is make it very easier to define declaratively uh, like um, HTML component or component of the UI component in the page without you writing HTML or CSS or JavaScript. Uh, it done that for you. At the, at the same time, it done the reactivity behind the scene. So if when we dig deeper into the reactivity, you will you will notice that Shiny already um, compute like drawing the reactive graph that uh, I don't know if, uh, if it will talk about this uh, in this chapter, but um, it will it will draw it for you the reactive graph and then execute it one by one. And if, if any, and this reactive graph is still the same until that any input changes, if it, if it notice or watch any input changes, in the page, it recalculate only the changed dependencies of, of a component that change of the of the input. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is what I have in mind uh, about that question. Oh, good. Like anyone has anything to add on that? So I think uh, Ahmed, uh, he has really explained it, but what I uh, want to add to what is from his explanation is that that means if the Shiny app uh, starts, every uh, user of the app, they have the same HTML component, but Shiny automatically fire up different server for different user of the app because this other user might be doing separate things, selecting a separate component from the, app, from the UI, while this other user I have is different, that is the different user that are using the same app, Shani fire up different server of, uh, session for each of them while they are working uh, with the same, the same, the same Shani app. That is why the book did mention that Shani uh, do does this for that means Shani, Shani is going to start at different server for the different user that are working with the same app. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for, for that clarification. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the, the reactive, reactive uh, programming uh, part of it. Uh, reactive programming is uh, an elegant and powerful programming paradigm, but it can be disorienting at first because it's a very different paradigm to, to writing a script. Uh, that's by the author. Uh, it's the, the mental model, uh, tell versus inform, providing shiny with, uh, with recipes, not giving it commands, which is like the declarative uh, uh, programming. The recipe is not not a recipe is not not commands like you have mentioned this. Uh, so, so now he's uh, trying to give us the distinction between the imperative and the declarative uh, programming. So uh, imperative is like uh, issue a specific command and gets carried out immediately, whilst uh, declarative programming expresses uh, express higher level goals or describe important constraints and rely on some rely on someone else to decide how and or when to translate that uh, into action 
So I, the, this uh, uh, part, it says it relies on someone else or it was not very clear to me as I was reading. I don't know. Someone wants to add something on that. Could be done. Yeah. I think that refers to the chat user. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So each of the users, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, imperative code is assertive, declarative code is uh, passive, aggressive. Uh, an example is like, uh, make me a sandwich versus ensure that the sandwich uh, is in the refrigerator when I look for, look inside for it. So uh, in essence, you describe your overall goal and the software figures out how to achieve them without further interventions. So I, I noticed somewhere in the book, it, it mentions that sometimes it could be uh, uh, a challenge because you could have uh, your overall goal and know exactly what you want, but uh, then it, 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 it becomes a problem to make the software do that for you. So I, I think he mentioned something like that in the book and, and said there are some ways to go, uh, go about with that, but maybe that will be discussed in, in later chapters. Yeah, any, anything on, on this uh, imperative and declarative programming? Yeah, so now it, it also mentions about uh, Shiny being very lazy. It allows us to be extremely lazy. Shiny's aim is to only do the work that is needed. Like it only update outputs that you can currently currently see. So uh, when I was reading this, I was like, uh, but you know, like, uh, like especially in the in input uh, uh, part of it, even though you don't see it, but I, I'm saying like the, 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 for, for, for you, for you, for the UI to display what you want, uh, like the background also has to adjust. Uh, I don't know where I'm making sense. <laughs> You mean like um, the dependencies? Because the yeah, like dependencies. The, yeah, yeah, the dependencies, uh, stuff like this. Yeah, so I think by, by lazy, it means that it only changes, uh, like it's it just not, not changing all, um, like all the three at the same, at, uh, at the time of execution. It just changes what being changed uh, or when, when something changes the UI input, then the tree look for its dependency uh, or that input dependencies, and then change only the dependency of that input. Um, uh, yeah. So that's oh. that's been lazy because we, um, unless we change it, we change something in the UI or this or a state of the application, uh, it it doesn't execute. Like um, I think with it, there is a um, framework like in Python called uh, uh, Streamlit or something like that. Is doing like re-render re all the page when anything change. So this is very different from that. It's uh, I think shiny more performant in that sense. So uh, yeah, it's, it's laziness in programming is is very good because it's uh, it, it, uh, it optimize and makes the performance better. So in, in a sense, it could be like it's more efficient uh, doing in being lazy in 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 this in this case. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, uh, thanks Thanks for sharing that, uh, Jim. It's a, an article. So it says, will this uh, app work? Uh, oh, no, there, there, is, there is a mismatch between the, the, in the, in the, in the server, Yes, it should have been a nice day. I think that's the issue, so it will not it will not work. It's like a, just a minor typo. Yeah. Uh, caution, if you are working on a shiny app and you just can't figure out why your code uh, never gets run, double check that your UI and server functions are using the same identifiers. So here the the output identifier, it's like uh, 
like a, a nice day and it says Nick day. So that's the reason why it's not on. And now it, it starts to talk about the reactive graphs. Understand order of execution. Uh, code is only run when needed. So these uh, reactive graphs, like uh, Ahmad uh, mentioned about them, I, I think uh, they are very useful because it, it helps us to know actually what is uh, uh, going on in the background um, and, and how the executions will, will, will take place and the dependencies you know, and also even the reactive uh, expression, how it, uh, how the reactivity will, will take place. So this uh, reactive graphs uh, are very useful. So the, the typical reactive graph looks like this. You have the input, the reactive, and then the, the, the output. Uh, so it describes how inputs and outputs are connected. It's a diagram identifying the reactive dependencies that describes the relationship. Uh, uh, between the, the output has a reactive dependence on the on the input. So this is a typical diagram. So we are in the, the output, which is a, like a greeting. It's reacting to the input, like that's the name. So suppose we supply a name like Joe, then the, the, the output will react and say like, hello, Joe, stuff like this. The reactive graph is a powerful tool for understanding how your app works. Make by hand, you could make by hand, but uh, you could uh, use the uh, diagram R package to make it manually, or use the React log package to do it, like it uh, automatically. So this will be discussed more in uh, in later chapters. And and there there is even a nice uh, some exercises on how to try to like draw these reactive graphs. Yeah, if anyone wants to say anything about these reactive graphs or has some questions or comments. Yeah, it seems really important to, to have that set of dependencies as the China grows. Um, I know if the target packet also have the same structure uh, because yeah, and it's a really good news that we also have a package to, to handle that because you by hand or you see any other tool by hand would be pretty hard to take that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because when I was reading the chapter, I was trying to do some of the exercises. I was trying to do them by hand, but I was like, oh no, this this if this is the only way, then I think as your your app gets bigger and bigger, it's going to be very difficult to want to take a, a pencil and a paper and you want to draw the diagram. It's going to be too too much. Yeah, you're right. Completely agree with you. Yeah, so now he talks about uh, the reactive uh, expressions. What a tool that reduces duplication uh, in your reactive code by introducing additional nodes into the reactive uh, graph. Think, uh, here, using the reactive, we could see this is like a, a reactive ex expression, and uh, uh, it's like it um, reduces the duplicate. I, I was reading this, but I was like, how does this reduce the duplicate? Uh, this, I was asking myself this. Uh, in other words, reactive makes apps cleaner and more efficient by removing redundant codes and recompetition. It also simplifies the reactive graph. Yeah, if someone has any way to explain how this makes, uh, reduces duplications, because I, I, I don't think that was clear to me. Um, I don't see it in this example. I think uh, it would show show up when you are using a calculation in some sort, and you want to use it with many uh, in multiple components at the same time. So you don't repeat your, yourself when you write the same code over and over again, 
uh, just write uh, it in the function and use the reactive to um, so, display, to calculate it. Okay, yeah. So uh, they, uh, they have a flavor for both uh, input and outputs. Uh, like input, you can use the results of a reactive expression in a output, uh, like outputs. So like basically they are inter, they could be uh, used inter, in, interchangeably. Like outputs, reactive expressions depend on inputs and automatically know when they, they need updates. Yeah. Uh, so before before that in the book it uh, it gives an example. Um, it, it gives an example. So this was the output where we we have the name and then we 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 are seeing the it, here is just it just illustrates the reactivity when we the the input like the name it the the output reacts and says hello 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 J hello Joe yeah. Is this a particular example it gives? Yeah, so so this was a, a classic example he, he gives in the um, in the in the book. Imagine you want to compare two simulated data sets with a plot and a hypothesis test. He has, so he has done a little uh, experimentation and came up with the function, the 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 poly, the frequent the the frequent freq, uh, polygon like the frequency polygon. Function which visualizes the two distributions with frequency polygons and t and, and t test uses the t the, and the t test function uses the t sets to compare means and summarizes the results. So it uses the gg plot and then this was the the code to do this. So if I have some simulated data, I can use these functions to compare to uh, two variables. So basically, that's it. That's the frequency polygons for um variable x1 and x2 so um so the, the whole idea was to do this in the uh using a shiny app so so it's like i like to use these two tools to quickly explore a bunch of uh, simulation a shiny app is a great way to do this because it lets you avoid tedious uh modifying and rerunning ad code uh, below, I wrap the pieces into a shiny app where I can interactively tweak the inputs. So basically, that's the 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 app, and uh, I think he uses it to exp illustrate how the reactivity works. And um, we could see the 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 the, the output, and that's the the output. Okay. Yeah, so that's the that's the output of the the the, the first shiny app using the the two simulated distributions. This is uh, distribution one and this is distribution two, and we could see the number of uh, simulations like a, a thousand and the means and all that. So we could see the reactivity if we change the range, like we could see how the the plot will how how it adjusts and we could see how it adjusts. Yeah. We are, we are seeing the adjustments. So the, there are some issues with this plot, and then he tries to um, tweak the app to make it more efficient. And and that, yeah.
Uh, yeah, so continue with the slides. We have the, the new uh, book apps, the producers and the consumers. So producers refers to uh, reactive inputs and expressions, while the consumers refer to reactive expressions and, and output. So this is uh, from the book. Uh, the two simulated data. Yeah, so if anyone has any issue with this graph and yeah. So now we look at the, the order of execution uh, determined solely by the reactive graph and not the order of lines. Uh, of code layout uh, in the server function, unlike the normal R. So like like here we could see, um, looking at the code, uh, the the, the react reactive expression like the 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 st uh, string should have come, uh, ideally should have come before the output uh, call, but it is interchanged and uh, this doesn't um, affect. It will not create any error. So we have the the input, which is the, the name, and then the string, and uh, then we have the output. So uh, regardless of how we arrange this, it will still work fine. So this is where the, 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 the reactive graphs become very handy, because uh, in a sense, it, they help us to really visualize what uh, uh, how the, 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 our, our app will display. Yeah, controlling and timing. Uh, yeah. So this reactive, uh, reactive graph, it's showing how the, the, the previous example, this example we've seen, this one, um, so that's the reactive graph, and it's showing us how the, uh, the how the, the, the whole thing looks like, what the what the what is taking place in the server level. So you could see it's not uh, very efficient because to do the t test is like uh, um, it always anytime it does the t, t, t test it 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 uh, sort of it reruns all this, it reruns the uh, all the sort of all the parameters in. In, in X1 and X2, and then does the t-test. If it also wants to compute the histogram, which is the frequency poly, uh, 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 yeah, the frequency polygons, it also um, sort of reruns all these uh, parameters. So, which is like, in a sense, not very efficient. Uh, like here it mentions, you will notice the graph is very dense. Almost every input is connected directly to the output. This creates uh, two main problems. They have, they, they, the app is hard to understand because there are so many uh, connections. There are uh, no pieces of the app that can that you can pull out and analyze in isolation. The app is inefficient because it does more work than necessary. For example, if you change the breaks of the plot, the data is recalculated. If you change the value of N1, X2, N1, X2 is updated. Um, in two places, which should not have been the case because uh, if we change n one, it should have it, it will only affect x one, but there's there's no need for x two to 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 update. So these are all inefficiencies in the in the the code. So we could uh, simplify the graph, and he gives uh, examples where we so simplifying the graph, then the 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 reactive sorry sorry simplifying the app will make the reactive uh, graph look like this. Now we could see. X1 will only change when we change this uh, parameters, and X2 also will only change when we change this parameters. And it, it in a sense, uh, 
Using reactive exception considerably simplifies the graph, making it much easier to understand. And it makes the app more efficient and it uh, sort of will do less work as in the previous case. So now he even makes it more, uh, sorry, like try to, to emphasize the uh, uh, modularity of uh, figure 3.9, draw boxes around the independent uh, components. We'll come back to this. Soon. So now you could see how it, it, the whole thing, so sort of the visualization becomes much more easier. You come to uh, see how the whole thing um, works now. And yeah. So like as you are working with your app and you have this uh, uh, reactive graph, it uh, you don't you don't lose track of what is taking on in the server and the background work that is being done. You you have a, a clear uh, vision of what is going on. So now he's trying to see why why do we need uh, uh, reactive expressions. Uh, so uh, so the, the the problem is um why can't you use uh, the existing tools to reduce duplication in your code creating new variables or functions unfortunately neither of these uh, techniques work in a reactive environment if you try to use uh, a variable to reduce duplication you might write something like this mm, yeah but uh, this code will not run you get an error because you are attempting to access input values inside a reactive uh, context. So the same thing with functions also. If you want to write uh, uh, functions, you 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 will get into something uh, of a problem like that. So now, now that uh, he says we are familiar with this whole idea of the uh, reactivity, we'll discuss more two more advanced techniques that allow you to either increase or decrease how often a reactive expression is executed. So uh, because uh, basically we want uh, the app to be very efficient and we don't want it to do unnecessary work. Yeah, we want to tap in the, the lazy component of, of, of Shiny. So uh, here I will show you I'll show how to use the basic techniques and in chapter 15, we'll come back to the underlying implication. To explore the basic idea, I'm going to simplify my simulation app. This uh, still going back to that app. We'll use the a distribution with only one parameter and force both uh, samples to share the same like number, like the same 